Why did I like Ghostbusters Afterlife, but I despised Ghostbusters 2016? Well, there's a huge difference, and all you need to do in order to see it is think of your favorite classic song right now. Who did a cover of it that was better than the original? Nobody. Think about The Voice. Think about American Idol. All they do is covers of other people's songs. But have you ever looked at one of those shows and thought to yourself, they're actually doing the cover better than the original? No. And keep in mind, American Idol had Kelly Clarkson on before anyone else, and she's freaking fantastic. She could basically sing that I was going to have cancer, and I would be okay with it, because all I would be thinking is, Kelly Clarkson is singing to me. You have stage four carcinoma. Sorry I had to break it to you. Seriously, though, think of any cover song you saw that you liked better than the original. I can think of three. Johnny Cash doing Hurt, Joan Jett doing I Love Rock and Roll, and William Shatner doing Common People. Outside of that, I can't think of many more examples of someone doing the cover better than the original. So why are you remaking films all of the time? Remakes of movies go back a pretty long time. The 1956 film, The Ten Commandments, was actually a remake of a 1923 Ten Commandments, which was actually a remake of something called the Bible. The budget of the 1956 Ten Commandments, it was 13 million. But it did pretty well. It made 122 million. Holy crap! No wonder why Hollywood thinks that remakes are a great idea. My favorite example is Conan the Barbarian. It was kind of a campy film, and I fully admit that it was an Arnold Schwarzenegger film. He's great at picking scripts that show off his talents, or in this case, his lack of English. He didn't have a huge vocabulary to draw from, but he didn't need one. It was a $20 million film. Domestically, it made $29 million. Internationally, or worldwide, I should say, it made $68 million. So that's not a bad return on your money. Go figure, years later, in 2011, Jason Momoa starred in a remake of it. And that didn't do quite as well. They made it for $90 million. Domestically, it made $21 million. Internationally, $63 million. Jason Momoa famously said that it turned into a big pile of steaming shit in post-production. In my opinion, it turned into a big steaming pile of shit before then, when someone thought, let's remake Conan the Barbarian. Someone watched Conan the Barbarian and they thought, the key to remaking this film is to make it as ultra-violent as humanly possible. And they just skipped past what it was about. It was a revenge story because it was a love story. They remade Magnificent Seven, too. $90 million for the budget. It made $93 million domestically. It was $162 million worldwide. So we can kind of guess that the reason why Hollywood keeps on doing remakes is because the international sales are enough to kind of, like, do better than break even. Oh, and because Hollywood is fucking unoriginal? And let's face it. There are too many actors, directors, and producers who think that they can do the original better than the classic cult that made us like the original so much. But then they go ahead and they make a remake and they forget all the reasons why we liked the original. Which brings us to... Ghostbusters 2016. Oh my god, I hated this film so much. I put off seeing it because when I saw the original clips, I knew I would hate the comedy that's inside of it, and I'll get to why in a second. But I finally watched it on an airplane, and instead of trying to enjoy it, which I wanted to do, I got out my notebook and I started taking notes. Most people think that the people who don't like Ghostbusters 2016 only dislike it because it involves women. Bah. Wrong. If it seems like I'm a little aggravated, I am. There's nothing that I hate worse than watching bad comedy by good actors. And in this case, you have four brilliant actresses who really know comedy and are doing it horribly. You see, I'm an improv coach. So I kind of have an idea why something is going wrong when it goes wrong. Like, let's say you had a scene where there's two women who are watching their girlfriend walk across the street and they see him talking to a guy and they're imagining the different ways that he dances and so they keep on dancing and they keep on telling each other, no, maybe he dances like this. No, maybe he dances like this. 
they're breaking a ton of basic improv rules. First of all, they're not looking at each other, they're not even reacting to each other, and they keep on saying no, which are three big no-nos when it comes to improv. But they forgot all of that, because whoever was directing them, Paul Fig, was telling them, yeah, just keep doing bits. I'll keep on filming, because I have millions of dollars to burn. I saw Ghostbusters when I was about 19 years old. I was a huge fan of SNL at the time. So of course I wanted to see a Ghostbusting film with some of my favorite comedians in it. And oh my God, it was such a great film to see in the movie theater. I still remember hearing the surround sound at different points where the ghosts would do things. The beginning of the original Ghostbusters starts off with a sequence with the librarian. As the librarian's going through the library, books fly around, and then she's frightened when she runs into a ghost. The first part of it is actually kind of scary. Ghostbusters 2016 starts out with a guy giving a tour and he's making jokes along the way, which already defeats what your purpose is in a Ghostbusters film. You want to start out with a scary kind of a tonality and then kind of eke your way into the comedy. Ghostbusters Afterlife spends the first few minutes building tension building tension, building tension, and I'm not going to say what happens, because if you haven't seen it yet, you should. The point is, it was an incredibly creepy film that also happened to land a comedic punch. When they made Ghostbusters 2016, I think they thought to themselves, we're going to make a comedic film that will be at times creepy. And that was the mistake, right there. They got the tone of the film wrong right off the top. The worst part about Ghostbusters 2016 is there's no straight man, or straight woman in this case. Everyone is trying to out-goofball the other person with more quirky habits. And that means that there's no one there to ground the comedy. If you remember the original Ghostbusters, Bill Murray was kind of the grounding force. Yeah, he did some things that were a little bit off, but for the most part, he was the person that reacted and in some cases, people would say spoke very dryly and made dry observations about the other things people were doing. You're right, no human being would stack books like this. That's what made the comedy. If it was just the rest of the cast just doing goofy things, we wouldn't like it because we would just be watching a bunch of people do goofy things. It was Bill Murray who was kind of speaking into our subconscious and just saying out loud all the things we were thinking while we were watching it. Well, no sense worrying about it now. Why worry? Each of us is wearing an unlicensed nuclear accelerator on his back. Kristen Wiig would normally be the straight person. But no, she's just as wacky as the other people. Again, I think these are extremely talented comedians, and they're being used poorly by director Paul Fig, who didn't know what the F he was doing. This is one of those times where the director should have said, you know what, I like that bit, but let's not use it here. Let's put it somewhere else in the film, where it's not breaking the tension that is supposed to be building before they reach the bad guy. There's a few other problems I had with Ghostbusters 2016. The colors were too colorful instead of muted colors like there were in the original Ghostbusters. But instead of doing that, let me just talk about all the cool things they did in Ghostbusters Afterlife. I swear, I loved Ghostbusters Afterlife so much that within the first few minutes, I started tearing up because I realized that they understood the tone of the original. The tone of the original was that cool, scary scene that happened in the library. The tone of Ghostbusters Afterlife spends about five to 10 minutes just building this tension where sad things happen and a lot of horror happens. That by the time that first 10 minutes finishes, you're invested. You wanna know what's going to happen next. You want to know what exactly happened. You kind of have an idea, but you want to know more. And you really get invested in the characters that they create after that. That's another thing that you need to do if you're ever going to make a movie. I don't know. Invest in your characters. Make your characters lovable. Phoebe, the little girl, is completely adorable. And by the time you're just watching her kind of stumble through life, you love her so much because we see her vulnerability. Same thing with the mom. The mom is going through the worst kind of pain in her life, having gone through a divorce, having lost her dad recently. And suddenly she's stuck in a place 
that she really doesn't want to be, and her kids kind of despise her for it. We all know someone like that. If we're not that person ourselves who have had that bad time where everything goes wrong and suddenly you're in a strange place that you don't necessarily want to be and feeling all those bad feelings. Spoiler alert. By the time they bring back the original Ghostbusters, you're already so invested in the characters that they've created in Ghostbusters Afterlife that you kind of think they don't need those guys. The point is, if you're going to remake a classic film, don't. Make a sequel to it. And then maybe we'll like it. Or at least maybe we'll respect you for coming up with a different idea. And I'm talking to you, J.J. Abrams, directly. Please, stop copying other people's films and make something original for once. I know you had nothing to do with Ghostbusters 2016, but I know that you're probably looking at the Ghostbusters franchise right now and thinking, I should have something to do with that. Keep your hands off of it. My name is John. Please watch my other videos.